Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs with a video tutorial on QuickBooks Online. Specifically, we're going to talk about the difference between classes and locations and why you should be using class to track your property specific data, potentially using location to track entity specific information. This is a tactic that I've been using. I've been teaching to my students. If you're interested in our end to end course on everything real estate accounting with QuickBooks Online, check out our course real estate accounting bootcamp. You can sign up. Uh, below we have the link there but let's get into it let's talk about classes and locations very common question i get which one should i use location kind of the the word sounds like it makes sense for a property so if i'm tracking something by property i want to see my p l by property location kind of makes sense but i'm going to show you why we should be using classes instead to get into it to start let's just make sure we're aware of how we should be using our chart of accounts now i have separate videos on this i encourage you to look at it but i just want to make sure we level set on that we need to be using a separate category for tracking property specific expenses and we don't want to be using a you know one two three main street building one two three main street land okay we need to use some other category now when we sign into quickbooks for the first time we don't have anything available to us now if we have quickbooks online essentials or simple start we could potentially use customer to track by property and you can do that and there's pros and cons to customer versus track uh, versus class but what I want to get into today is why we shouldn't be using location so let me show you what location is so if we want to turn on location we would go to our gear icon here we go to account and settings and we would go to advanced and then right here track locations is off currently by default again you won't see this unless you're on QuickBooks Online Plus or beyond so if you don't have QuickBooks Online Plus you need to be using customer okay so I'm gonna click on location okay and I'm gonna say yes to that so if I wanted to do that um, I could now if I go to create an expense I have the location field here now you're seeing what I'd want you to use for location but let me show you let's go to all this I'm gonna add a location for our properties just so we understand how it might work okay now you also saw me click on businesses okay that's part of the reason why I'm gonna uh, demonstrate for you why you should be using location tracking or business tracking to track at the entity level so QuickBooks actually actually lets you change the name of it okay so I'm gonna add a new one here for uh, 264 Union that's a property that I'm gonna buy okay and then let's do another one for <clears throat> 122 Buffalo okay so I can go into and create an expense now I'm gonna create these in 2018 even though I'm recording 2023 just so it shows up on the report that I want it to show up on okay so here I'm gonna create a create an expense and I'm gonna indicate business as 264 Union like if that's my property okay now notice the term business is here even though it says location I have in the past changed it to business okay so here I can indicate you know property tax and I can put two thousand dollars and that's it save and close maybe I'll save a new let's create another expense for 264 Union as the business okay so 264 Union there let's do repairs and maintenance okay 500 and then save and close okay so on the surface and the other thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna record the purchase of property too as well so I'm just gonna do a journal entry I'm gonna get some money in the account as well so let's put some money in my checking account This is going to come from a contribution I'm gonna leave business blank business again would be location so if you haven't switched it to business it would show location this in investment into my business has nothing to do with this business it's or it has nothing to do with the property okay so in this case I'm gonna leave that blank so I'll save and close that uh, and then last thing I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna record the purchase of a property just to get something on my books I'm just gonna put it all toward building to start let's say about a $75,000 property let's say there's no closing costs I know that's not realistic but just to get it in the books now this let's say was exactly 264 Union Street okay cool so looking um, decent here now I could potentially show this balance sheet by business again business is location tracking it says locations here so like QuickBooks is kind of switching over right now and if I do that <clears throat> here I have that 264 Union property and I can drill down and I can see my net income and great that's my net income for that property that is good the problem is 
What happens, and this is very common, when we have an expense where our multiple lines are split between different properties? We have no ability, when we use location or business tracking, to indicate by line what it was for. For example, if I had repairs and maintenance for one property and repairs and maintenance for another, one was for 264 Union, one was for 122 Buffalo Street, I have no option to make that update. Okay, I can't do it. All right, on the contrary, if we look at classes, I am going to turn those on now. Again, advanced, classes. Once I turn those on, and by the way, this here is where you can change location to business. I'll do that in a second. There's a reason to use location. It's just not for property specific tracking. I'm going to turn on class and it asks me, when we assign a class, do you want it to be one for the entire transaction or one for each row? And I'm gonna indicate one for each row. That gives me a huge benefit. When I'm recording expenses, I can now split things up, okay? So if we go into those expenses I already have, let's make a change here, okay? I'm going to update this to be, now I have class available to me, 264 Union there. Notice I have other lines here as well. I'm not gonna do anything with that yet, but I will in a second. I'm just gonna update these transactions that I already have. My property tax, I have class available to me now, okay? I haven't done anything with the location yet. I am gonna make an adjustment on that. And now let's look at um, the building that we purchased, just like we had used business before or location before. Now I'm gonna indicate class here, okay? And so I've just updated everything to kind of be now to class. Now what if I have an expense that spans multiple properties. Go to expense. I'll leave business blank for now. <clears throat> okay, so let's say I have repairs and maintenance. 500 for 264 Union. And then repairs and maintenance. 1000 for 122 Buffalo Street. or one, two, three Main Street, it looks like. And let's do one more. Let's say I have property, uh, let's say uh, supplies or something like that. Cleaning, sure, for 264 Union. Okay, so one transaction and I can split between the classes. I cannot do that with, um, with location. So now if I display columns by classes as my balance sheet and I see my net income for each, I can drill down into that and then put classes on the top. And there I have my P&L by class looks nice and neat, okay? So the main difference between class and location is our ability to track class at the line item level, hugely beneficial when we're running through our books, okay? So we've accomplished that. Now let's talk about what might be an applicable reason to use location. It is really powerful, okay? Now what I use location for is to include multiple business entities into one single subscription of QuickBooks Online, okay? This is a very, really advanced technique. I have a few separate videos on it. I'm going to dabble in it on this one too to give you an idea of what location tracking is good for. Now in the course in Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp, we go into really big detail on this. It's an awesome strategy. It's got some pitfalls, but let's at least talk about what we can use it for. The first thing is I wanna use the term business, okay? So again, in my advanced settings, and you saw like QuickBooks still had it as business from when I had it set before. So it's still like it was changing over to location. We're gonna say go back to business. So I can indicate the location label here as business, okay, instead of class. I'm gonna save that, click done. Okay, now if I go to my list of businesses or locations, let's go to all lists, you'll see that from, from previous setups, I have a couple different LLCs in there. And actually, I'm going to make these ones inactive. I will do that in a second. First, I'm going to eliminate um, those transactions. So if I go into, say, my, my, um, my JMB checking, like that big investment that I made, this is where you would want to indicate a business on this, okay? This is not specific to a property, but it maybe it is specific to one of my entities that I own. This was an investment into this entity. And in fact, if and when you are using business and location tracking, 
The number one rule is that every single transaction must have a business associated with it. You can leave class field, you can leave the class field blank if your transaction doesn't uh, go specifically to a property. So in this case here, I bought this building. Instead of putting 264 Union in both places, I'm gonna say, this is for this, this business, okay, with this class. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same here with this 1950. Okay, this is that expense that I had. Now here I'm gonna indicate what business this was. Now, something to keep in mind. You still only want to have the transaction go to one business, even though you have multiple properties, okay? So if you are spending on multiple properties, you want that all to be with the same business. If not, that's okay, we can fix it with an intercompany equity, a little bit more of the advanced technique that uh, we, we can dive deeper into. All right, so now I'm just gonna do this balance sheet by business to kind of see where I'm at. I think I have some stuff I need to fix. Yeah, so we got some of this. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't fix this yet. So that's gonna bring that back over. And I got this 2,500, these two transactions too. So here, instead of indicating the property, I'm indicating the business that owns that property. <clears throat> Okay, and so now if I go back to that balance sheet, buy property, it looks really good. So if I had another transaction that was for another property or for another uh, business, so let's say that I have another, um, I bought another building for 125,000. Okay, and let's just say that, that uh, I'm sorry, that was, yep, so building is gonna be debited came out of, let's just say it was owner's equity that paid for it. Okay, so here, let's say this is a different business. Let's say it's this uh, 264 Union Holding. And then the class here, I mean, it'd probably be 264 Union, but let's just keep it different just to demonstrate this. And so now I can draw up a balance sheet by business and have multiple entities in there. And then when I go into the net income, instead of showing my net income by business, now I can go by class and I have more, okay? So the idea here is that you have more options for classes. For businesses, you're gonna have less of them, okay? So you're gonna have just the LLCs, the entities that you have listed as locations. You're gonna have every single property listed as a class, or you could use the customer method as well. But this is why, the main reason why, is because we cannot indicate a business by line here. And for that exact reason, we need to be using class or customer for our property specific transactions. Now, if you're interested in the multiple entities within one QuickBooks Online subscription, check out this video that I have on that exact topic. Again, it's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but if you are in real estate and you have a multiple different holding companies and entities, it makes a lot of sense. A few things. One, we of course save on the subscription cost, but that's not even the main reason. The main reason is we save on the setup. Your chart of accounts, your list of vendors, your saved reports, the ability to juxtapose two businesses next to each other is amazing, okay? And as long as we do it right and we drop the reports correctly, our accountant will get exactly what they need. There's no reason for them to fight it. They're gonna get the balance sheet, the P&L, buy business, perfectly executed. So check out that video, check out the course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We dive into that in great detail and I answer a lot of questions within the community of that course as well to make sure we all have uh, that operating well. We've had hundreds of, of real estate investors are using this method and really, really enjoying it and they're able to see all their business financials all in one place. All right, let me know if you have questions on this, comments. Uh, also check out those other videos. And then of course, keep checking back. We're gonna continue to, to put out a ton of content on QuickBooks Online, real estate investing. I'd love to know what you'd like to learn about. Check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com and I'll see you on the next video.